Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Welcome back to the Unity 5 RPG tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how we add a smooth scrolling ca camera to our character. So let's get started. The easy way of doing this is just having a look at how our camera currently works. Now earlier on in the series, we set size to, I think it was about to, didn't need to be exactly to, but that's not actually going to be the right size and it's also um, not animated. So the first thing I'm going to do is just position the camera central on our map and then I'm going to position our player so that they start, you know, roughly in the center of the screen as well. This just centers our camera so it doesn't have such an obvious centering when we start the game. The next thing I'm going to do is create a new script simply by right clicking on the scripts folder and selecting create C sharp script. I'm going to call this camera follow and then I'm going to open that in mono develop simply by double clicking on it and opening mono develop. There it is. Now the camera is going to take um, two properties. The first, sorry, one, it's going to have one property, one public property and one internal property. The public property is going to be transform. So public transform and it's going to be target. This is going to be the transform of the target. Now for anyone who doesn't know what a transform is, a brief explanation is simply that a transform stores the position data, the scale data, and the rotation data of an object within Unity. The next property we'll have is a camera. This won't be public, and it's going to be called MyCam. This is just a reference to the camera object that this script is, is attached to. So in the start script, I'm going to say MyCam equals get component. It's going to be of type camera. And that gives us a reference to the camera associated to the object that this script is also associated with. Now in our update loop, I'm going to do some, some very simple math and I'm going to use the linear interpolation function of a vector three. Now I'll explain what those are in a second, but I'll show you what we're doing first. So the first thing we need to do is set the size of the camera. So I can say my cam orthographic size. What this means is orthographic size directly relates to this size variable. So as we change the size, of this, you'll notice our game changes in size, the size of our camera. We're gonna set this in code so that exactly 32 pixels for the camera is 32 pixels on the screen. The way we do this um, is by doing some very simple math. It's gonna be screen height, so screen dot height, divided by 100 F, so that's just 100.0, F makes it a floating point number divided by an arbitrary scale factor. So I'm going to use 4F for me. You can try 2F, 3F, 6F, whatever number you want on the end here. This is just going to be scale, right? Now, if I save this script and attach this script to the camera, the main camera object, and then we run the, oh, the game's already running. If we run the game, what you should see is that the size, oh, let me stop my game. Let me attach the script to my camera. There we go, and then run my game. You'll see the size of the game has changed to 1.085. Now I'm using a scale factor of four. This basically means that every 32 pixels becomes 64 pixels on the screen. So everything is double in size. The interesting thing about the way that I've done this is that as you change the height of the screen, you'll notice that instead of the game getting smaller, the scale factor simply adjusts so that we're still seeing a sprite in the same resolution that we expect it to be. This means that our game can be set to free aspect ratio and you'll notice that as we zoom the game up or shrink the game down, things don't um, get skewy or weird out of scale. It maintains the aspect ratio of our game. It's also useful if, you've, if you're trying to run your game on you know multiple different kinds of platforms where the screen size changes but you don't want the resolution and the scaling of your game to change either. So that's completely optional. You don't have to do that. And I'll just demonstrate what happens if I set this to two. So I set that to two and I saved my game. Now what you'll notice is that we have everything in 32 by 32 size pixels, and I'll just adjust the size of the screen so you can see that that is taking effect. Personally, I prefer everything to be doubled, so I'm gonna go with four. So this is optional, you don't have to do this, but it basically is a very simple way of allowing you to run your game across multiple devices and be sure that the scale of the game is going to work always. If this wasn't enabled, what would happen to your game is this. As I shrink the game down, the pixels just get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So for instance, if you're playing on a small phone, that's what your game will look like. If you're playing on a big phone, that's what your game will look like. Or, you know, different size screens, different size windows, all of those issues 
uh, resolved with this simple line. Now, to get the camera to follow the player, we simply say if target, which basically means if the target exists, we didn't specify any condition. So the condition by default was, does this object exist? So if target, then we say transform dot position. So now we're saying we're addressing our own transform. This is the transform object that's attached to the camera. Transform dot position, which is what we want to manipulate. It's going to be equal to vector three dot lerp. Now this stands for linear interpolate. Linear interpolation is a mathematical concept that allows you to go from one number to another number at a percentage of, of scale. So we can say we want to linear interpolate between zero and one at a percentage of 0 0.2, which means we will step from 0 to 1, we will move to 0 0.2. From 0 0.2 to 1, we will move at a, percent a percentage of 20% in, in that direction. So I'm going to say we want to move, this is simply uh, from, to, and how fast. That's how I'm going to define this for you guys to make it very simple. So we want to go from our current position, which is transform dot position. We want to go to the target position, target dot position, and we're going to move there at a speed of 0.1 f. That's going to be 10%. Unfortunately, that's not everything, and I'll save the script and I'll show you why. So the script has been saved. Now what should happen when the script recompiles is you'll see the camera should center itself on the player as we move the player around, and it doesn't because we need to set the target. Sorry about that. Just select your camera, and then in the target property here, drag your player object onto target. Now, if I select play, what you should see is the camera centers itself on the player, but the screen just disappeared. What's going on here? Let's have a look at this in 3D space. So I'm gonna turn 3D back on in my scene view. You'll see the camera right now is sitting quite far away from the game map. If I run this, watch the camera. Did you see it shoot towards the map? I'll run it again. The camera's moving towards the map. Now the reason the camera is moving towards the map is because by default our camera in 2D space is set with a Z position of negative 10. But our player object is set with a Z position of 0. So when we ask Linear Interpolate to move us from where we are to where the player is, it takes that literally and it moves our Z position from where it is to where the player is, which is on the map. And we can't see the map if the camera is on the map. It has to be further behind the map looking at the map. So to address this, we simply add negative 10 to the resulting value of the linear interpolation. So I'm going to add a new vector 3. It's going to be 0, 0, and then negative 10 for the, for the uh, z-axis. So basically we add nothing to x, we add nothing to y, and we add negative 10 to the z-axis. Now if I run this, what you should see is our camera still does the same thing because I didn't save the script. So I'm going to save the script, then if I run this, what you should see is our camera will follow the player, but it will also stay away from the game. It will stay away from the game map. And as I move the um, player around the map, what you should see is we get this really nice, smooth camera. Now when I let go of the button, you'll see the camera takes a few seconds, well not a second, you know, takes a small amount of time for it to catch up, and when I start moving, it takes a small amount of time for it to accelerate to its speed. Um, this basically, this is uh, an effect of the linear interpolation. We can speed that up or slow that down by controlling this uh, 0.1f. We can also turn that into a public property that can be controlled from within the Unity editor simply by saying public float. I'm going to say um, m underscore speed for movement speed. And then I'm going to put that here instead of 0.1f. And by default, I think we'll initiate that at 0.1f. So it'll just be defaulted to 0.1f. Now if we look in our Unity editor at the main camera object, you'll see it now has a speed, a speed variable. If I decrease this to 0.01, run the game, what you should see now is the camera will take a lot longer to catch up to the player. This is quite useful the way that we've done this um, by separating the, uh, the camera away from our player and also being able to control the speed of your camera you're able to animate these properties using Unity's inbuilt animation system. So say for instance, if you have a cutscene and you have multiple NPCs on the screen, you can simply change the target of the camera. If I duplicate the player, and let's say I move that player, you know, from here to here, if you had a cutscene happening on your game, you could simply change the target of the camera from the main player 
to the second player and you'll see that the camera moves to the second player and then you know if they're, they're saying their dialogue or whatever happens and then you move it back the camera will automatically target whoever it needs to be targeting so i hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial i hope you've learned something and got something out of this if you have please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my youtube channel any comments questions and feedback as always can be left in the comment section below and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye for now